thank you for tuning in to another episode of Tomorrow Man Podcast. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a follow on social media to stay up to date on future episodes. On Facebook and Instagram, it's at Tomorrow Man Podcast. On Twitter, at Tomorrow Man Pod. On this episode, I'm joined by my good friend, Andy Alonzo. We go into performing, recording, and mixing music, working with MXPX, Life on the Road, his little drummer boy Adam, and Fozzy Zero, and much more. Really great episode. Hope you guys enjoy it, and thank you for listening to Tomorrow Man Podcast. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Tomorrow Man Podcast. I am joined by my very good friend, Andy Alonzo. Hello, everybody. Thank you for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. It's been a while. Yeah. It has been. It has been. I think the last time we hung out was, uh, was it Drifters? Well, was it over there or something like that? You're doing Drifters, a... Drifters, yeah. I was doing like an acoustic kind yeah. of set thing. Yeah. Did some Atari songs and all that. Right, right. Uh, yeah, Drifters or, I don't know, maybe, I'm sure San Fernando Brew. At some point in time, I mean, I think yeah. everybody ends up there. It's you know, it's high school reunion every time you go. So, have you performed over there lately, or actually anywhere else? Uh, mm-hmm. not really. I don't really. I don't do that too often anymore. Um, not as much as I'd like to, but you know, every now and again, I, I think I have something coming up similar there, um, in like November or something like that. There's kind of something brewing, but I don't know. It's not something I just. Friends asked me to do it. Yeah, it's I'm, just gonna be like you doing like a yeah, acoustic? just kind of the same idea as last time, just acoustic, and I'll just like cover some songs, a bunch of '90s stuff, and you know, just stuff, something where I don't have to really prepare or think about it. It's just you already have it. Let's in, go. Yeah, yeah, it's already there. You know, it's it's you know, it's in, in the, the in tank. muscle memory. Yeah, so you just you just just do it, but you know, we'll see. And uh, are you still playing in any bands right now? I know you're playing with the uh, Manaticos, right? I was Man- I was doing that. Yeah, doing that uh, here and there. Um, but you know, right now it's just just kind of uh, working, working a lot, um, doing some touring, working yeah, you, for a couple different bands. You work for VR Sound, right? I work for VR Tour Sound. Uh, yeah, in and with that, it's more of a on the project side. I do a lot of building gear, um, deal with a lot of clients, and kind of uh, building out uh, tour rigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me, touring rigs. And for people who don't know, what what does that consist well, of? Well, that consists of um, that consists of uh, your mixing console. Um, you know, any amps, uh, speakers, uh, the monitors, the wedges that face you, um, kind of any and everything, the stands, the mics, the cables, everything that uh, consists of everything in the audio, everything about the concert that's not the actual instruments yeah. involved, that's exactly what what, uh, what we do. And it, does it only encompass uh, tour sound or do you do um, studio stuff as well? Uh, not studio stuff, really, not very often, but uh, broadcast do a lot of broadcast um okay get a lot of gear together for uh you know um uh, what do we got lately i've done some like uh, anything reality any reality shows and and as far as well our the company has done survivor from from the very beginning mm-hmm. um my job in in the kind of in the whole scheme of things is uh i build out gear for like um you know things like i don't like a like we do a lot of game shows. We do a lot of uh, do a lot of um, game shows know, like that, these. that are just on regular cable. Yeah, basically. yeah, like regular you know TV shows, and we do a lot of um, like Family things, Feud things like that, or? stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it all varies, and it's just that's kind of such a dense um, part of the LA market is all of the you know any studio any any um, soundstage installs. And they do, yeah, they do the Family Feud stuff or any of those TV shows or things like, uh, like American Ninja Warrior, stuff like that. You know, some of the more, um, you know, kind of grandiose, just big live kind of what studio are, audience things. What's the more, more enjoyable part of it? Like, do you enjoy doing um, those shows more or actually doing live concerts more? You know, for me, um, it's always been mixing. I, I love mixing shows. I yeah. love being... On the more um, recording bands, recording bands. I did that a lot. I did yeah. that a lot back in the day. Not so much anymore. I you, do you here still, and there. You still have uh, warning recordings, right? 
Uh, kind of, sort of. I just, I just do it on my own. Um, I'm working on a couple albums right now, but it's very much just when time is, you know, when I, when I can yeah. do it. Is it your stuff or other other people's? Stuff? Um, right now I'm remixing uh an album that I did with Fozzie's Hero. Okay. Um, we just got the rights back to it from the old label that we were on, so we just got the rights back. I can actually go back and remix it. Um, I was never super satisfied with the way it was mixed down. I liked it, but I think it was just, um, you know, it was left a little wanting. So got the rights back to it, and we're going to put everything, put all of our old records out on Spotify just just to just have it for, up. Just yeah. to have it up. Just yeah. if anybody wants to hear it, it's there. You know, we still have some uh, some people, like, people ask us to do shows, you know, every now and again, and and we don't really do them very often, but you know when we do, it's a good time. It's a good little reunion for yeah. for people, and people enjoy it. So let's throw our records up on online and um, doing that, and uh, doing a live record right now with a band called Slick Shoes. Um, mm-hmm. You know, big band in in the in the early two thousands, early mid two thousands. They did a lot of uh, a lot of warp tours and things like that. They they uh, they were you know they were out there. They they were on a couple of labels. And is and, the live um, album going to be a new? New material completely, it's, or is it like a half and half kind? It's of kind of a it's an anthology with with a few new songs. Uh-huh. So you know they haven't put a record out since like two thousand and three. So it's so there's but they still have a strong following that you know any show that that they do you know a lot of people come out to. It's it's kind of a you know they're kind of a legacy band in their scene. Right. So you know the idea came up where let's let's make a record. Let's do something. You know we did it at the uh, at the House of Blues Anaheim and. Um, it was great. A lot of people came out, and you know, we got what we needed. Right now, it's just kind of working on the finishing touches, and uh, hopefully, by the end of the year, we got something that uh, you know that can be up up online or however mm-hmm. they're going to distribute it. And it's pretty cool. They were actually one of my one of my favorite bands when I was kind of in high school, growing up. So it's kind thing. of a dream to be able to work for them or it, work it, with them. Yeah, 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 and and it has been, and that's kind of been my as of late, just kind of how my career path has gone is. Is one of my main uh, gigs right now is I work for a band called MXPX. Yeah, and that band, uh, you know, I grew up listening to them. Like I, I was the kid in high school with yeah. the MXPX T-shirts. You know, I remember you right. liking them so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and I, like five years ago, you know, the story kind of the story has its its twists and turns. But uh, the idea was that I wanted to um, I wanted to propose to my girlfriend at one of their shows. And I was like, hey, I work for a company called Center Staging. I'll hook you guys up. I'll give you guys full backline. You know, I'll 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 do I'll even drive it all there. You just, you know, you guys just get a get a U-Haul for me. I'll give you a full backline, got it all set up for you guys, and I just want to do this. I was hoping that they wouldn't go for it. Well they'll be like, well, I was hoping that they wouldn't want the backline. Oh, and it okay. would just be a segue into Oh, oh yeah, just, but just you can come do on stage this. regardless. Yeah. Exactly. That's what my uh, my intentions were. But they're mm. like, that sounds awesome. Also, yeah, we need all the backline, so bring it on, bring it on our way. I was like, shit, okay, well, I got to follow through with this now. How long ago was this? About five years ago, you want to say? About uh, five years, yeah. Yeah, so at the time, um, it was, uh, who was, uh, Brent Dannon was studio manager over at Center Staging, mm-hmm. and, you know, I asked him for a favor. I'm like, hey, I need all this backline. Can you make this happen for me? He's like, yeah, got it. You Get told him your whole deal of what you're trying to do told, and everything? Yeah, I told him the whole the whole plan, and he's like, yeah, he's, he was all about it. He's like, that is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it worked out and, um, she said yes. And now we're married. And, uh, and on top of that, the band asked me back to be, uh, to be their driver for a a tour thereafter. And it was a, you know, a short run tour. I was, um, I was driving, um, like a sprinter van. It was like a real kind of, you know, real quick thing. And my first uh, task with them is they tasked me to, to, uh, they sent me to, to Orlando, Florida and I had to drive from Orlando by myself in a Sprinter van with some gear in it, Orlando to, I think, Houston, Texas. It's like a 16-hour drive. I had to do it in about a little over a day, day and a half-ish um, by myself. So that was a test for you to do? That was not the test. That was just the task uh, to, to actually to start the tour. Oh, because, okay. Because we started the tour in Texas and ended it in Orlando, uh-huh. and we had to drop the Sprinter back off in Orlando. So it's like I had to start at the finish line come back to the beginning, and then work my way through it. So, weird. But uh, it worked out. And got there, you know, did the tour. First day of the tour, um, they asked me, like, hey, you know, 
we know you do sound stuff, this and that. You know, would you want to help us out with this and just kind of, you know, make sure everything's kind of going well? Because mm-hmm. it was a little throw and go on some of the details and we and you know for somebody to be the uh, the liaison to the to the house audio guys it would right. be it'd be beneficial for them so i did and by and the first show i mixed and i've mixed pretty much every show since and it's been about five years and um yeah and when you're mixing these shows are you just trying to recreate what you what you know the record sounds like or are you just trying to make it sound great for that room it's or a it's, little bit of both, probably. It's right? a combination yeah. of both. You start off by measuring up the room, figuring out, you know, what I I have a couple of a uh, couple of tracks that I listen to that I know uh, how they should sound. You know, um, I think I use uh, I use Rage Against the Mas- Rage Against the Machine and like a Steely Dan song, and I just throw it up on the PA and I EQ it and you know make sure that it sounds good in the room. So is I mean, that something you taught yourself, or did somebody kind of teach you no, that little no, trick? No, no, I've been I've been been taught by by many, mm. you know, and um and yeah, so so I I do I start there and um you know make sure the PA sounds good, EQ yeah. it, the room, every room is different, so we kind of figure out what's what, and then mix the band, and mixing the band is more the luxury of working for a band that I really like is I mix them for me. Which sounds kind of weird, but I've been, you know, as a as a kid growing up, I went to a bunch of their shows. I know what it should sound like. I know what I want it to sound like. So I mix them for, for myself as, I guess you could say, like a fan, and how I want them to sound. And in turn, it kind of makes for a, a good show for for the actual audience. Did you have I mean, any moments uh, with the band where you fanboyed out, or was it kind of like I don't I don't want to freak them out and have them maybe cancel whatever it is we're doing? So. I got to maybe slip it in just a little bit at a time. Like, <laughs> just, hey, just, man, how'd you write this song? Like, yeah. what were you thinking when you wrote this? You know, um, you know it w- it wasn't really like that. Once we kind of got going, we just got going. And um, you didn't and really the, have the time guys to think are, about it. The guys it. are great. Yeah, it's just, we just go. And then and then it just happened so, so quickly. We just kind of became friends really fast. And then that was just it. We're just, this is what it is now. You know, and, and they've been, I mean, they're... An amazing band to work for. They've taken me, you know, or, or, or across the world. It's been it's been great, and they're just like awesome friends. So now at this point, we do a lot of like weekender stuff. Um, you know, fly out on a Thursday night and fly home on a Sunday or a Monday or something like that. Do mm. a couple shows in any like major market cities like New York or Nashville or anything like that. Um, we do LA a lot, and you know, just fly anywhere. And then you know, it's just it, it's kind of more of a I get to hang out with my buddies on a, you know on a weekend, go out, play a show. You know all the most of the shows get sold out pretty easily. Excuse me. No, oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just it just it works. It's a great you know it's a great thing to be a part of. They just put out a new record too, so it's just you know the momentum is really hot right now, and we're just kind of you know writing it out. It's, yeah. You know I'm writing it out with them. They're yeah. doing all the hard work, and I'm just kind of just going In the back, with it. Just like oh, yeah. as long as it sounds good, the crowd is really into it. Yeah. Then- yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a lot of fun, and you know most of it is, it's just it's more of a of a camaraderie between myself and the band. Yeah, um, I feel like anybody can mix the show. I feel well, any good mixer can mix the show because there's there's plenty of good there's amazing mixers out there. Yeah, you know, much better than me, but they're not this, you. They're <laughs> right, yeah. right. So it's like we're we're friends. So it's kind of. More than that, I yeah. mean, I know it's one thing to have a skill, but it's another thing to be a good hang, you know. Right, right, and that's and that's what's really important with this with this crew that we have going on with you know with the band with um with our tour manager, uh, guitar techs, anyone in the crew, anyone who who's on the road with us. It's just it's a good time. It's it's nonstop laughs from very beginning to very end. Any any of our our tour runs, and that's kind of I think the most important part about it. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, doing all this mixing for these great bands now, and I and I know you've recorded my band back in the past and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, was was there any mixing that you did before that, or was it like the start of recording bands when we were in high school that kind of got you that passion, you know, to really pursue? There was live sound or, or mixing actual bands. And the, stuff like there that? was an EP in the early two thousands in our high school. I think it was our junior year. It was called the Cadaver Synod. And it was from our friends in New Age Disorder. Mm. That record just did it for me. It the songs were great. I didn't even know the guys yet. 
the, just the songs were amazing to me. And and um, but what compelled me the most was they did it themselves, or you know, it was all they didn't go to some big studio. And back then, it wasn't really a thing, or I didn't even know it was a thing to to do home recording. Everything. I don't think it really was that bad back then. People didn't have either yeah, the laptops or the. It wasn't easily accessible. You'd have to go to a studio. You'd have yeah. to pay money. You'd have to do this. Have to do that. When when my band um, back in the day, we did our first record. We went to uh, Love Juice Labs in Riverside or something like that. And young was, grandmas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The young grandmas uh, and Love Juice Labs over. I think it was in Rubido, La Habra. Rubido I think, or something like that. I forgot the street. Something like that. Yeah. I recorded there too. Yeah, everyone went there because it was affordable. It was kind of, you know, marketing tour. They even had little um, rooms you could sleep over and, right. and bunk in. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And and that that whole, you know, that was the studio. And that's what I thought. That's the only way you can do it. And then these guys put this this EP out and they're like, oh yeah, we did it ourselves, you know, this and that. I was like, oh shit. Mind well, blown. Well, somebody can do this by themselves. So from there on in, like I bought my first microphone, I bought a mic stand, I bought, you know, this and that and this and that. And, you know, it's just, I, I was always, I always had like a, you know, like a part-time job to kind of just kind of get through thing, get through, you know, high school. Yeah. But mostly all the money would just go to just buying new little bits and pieces of gear. And Slowly that was just acquiring it. it yeah. And that was just it. And that's, uh, I put all my eggs in that basket all the time. And you know, and then you know, joining other bands and and making records with with other bands and just kind of, you know, it all it all stemmed from, holy shit, I can do this myself. Yeah. You know? Is there are, or are there any bands that say um, uh, what what would be the the right way? To say? I guess made you not want to do it anymore, or like that made the process very difficult and maybe kind of question like, is this really like the right path I want to take? Because I feel like even with me sometimes, wh wh whatever it is I'm pursuing musically or whatever, there are moments where, or days, or parts in the day where I'm just like, man, I don't, this doesn't feel right, or, or I, I don't know if I even chose the right path. It's fun, but all these, all whatever negativity is kind of coming on from the external is kind of like affecting this whole thing. I, I suppose so, sometimes. Um, and, and it's not like a particular band or, or anything, it's more of just... You know, a certain moment, a, vibe. a certain moment, circumstance, uh, uh, an exhaustion, uh, whatever, an argument, be it with, you know, uh, a, a coworker or some band member or you know, anybody really. You know, it's just like little little things throughout the day. If I, you know, like anybody, if you wake up and you don't have your cup of coffee or whatever, just little things yeah. that are like shit. Like I should have been a dentist. You know, it's <laughs> like little things like that happen yeah. to me all the time. But but that's what makes it good because. You know, you deal with all those 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 emotions and the the pain in the ass and this and that and this and that and everything that kind of stacks up. But then when you go out and you just and you do it and it's time to to mix the show or, or for you to play the show or for you to, to to mix down you know the new song, it's it it's all worth it. It all just kind of gets to that one yeah. point, and you're like, all right, it, this is it, this is why I'm doing this. Yeah, this is exactly why I'm doing this. Yeah, I feel that. And it's uh oftentimes easily forgettable you know it's like shit what am i doing like yeah just, like it's, oh, it's frustrating i don't want to do this anymore. but but anything and everything is you know it is a at the end of it, it it's you know it's an art it can be a job sometimes and like any job or just anything in life it's like there's frustrating tasks yeah. involved but you kind of push through it and then you get to to to, to the badassery of it all you know yeah and definitely. um Easier said than done sometimes, I suppose. But it is. But uh, yeah, like you, like you said, just kind of pushing through with it, you kind of reap all the the reward of it. You know, yeah. of, of the passion that you put into yeah. it. Yeah, and there's and there's a lot of times. You know, there's especially just being out there with with uh, you know with the bands and, and mixing these shows and being able to spend a weekend in New York or or they they took me to Tokyo last year. Mm -hmm. You know, s spending spending a, a week in in Japan or we were just in in Southeast Asia. Things like that, like. There's so many moments of, how the hell did I get here? Yeah. When am I going to do this again? It's yeah. just kind of like, you know. And how's the, the challenge as far as uh, traveling to these different places, different venues, and mixing within those venues? Is, is there, um, I, 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 I'm sure the difficulty must range from different, different levels, you know, depending right. on where you're at, the, the weather, you know, even. 
Sure. Um, yeah. Sh- showing up as far as as far as the the technical aspects of like a venue is concerned, every venue has their own set of PA. Every venue has their own you know house mixers who 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 you know measured and and dialed in the acoustics the PA, of the whole thing. Did everything. There's a million things that were done before I show up, and there's a million things that can be done after I leave. But you know, for that moment, I got to work with this. Do that band. Right. Yeah. And and um. Some of the difficulties can be just acoustics of the room is is a big thing. For the most part, there's for the, for the uh, for the size of room that we do the the certain the capacity. There's um there's kind of like a standard desk. There's the, like the ones that center staging. You see the SC forty eights all the time. Any of the Avid desks. Yeah. That's the standard everywhere. Um, once in a while you see something else, but for the most part, that's kind of and you're able to work with whatever's there. Right. Right. right yeah. And and if it's an Avid desk, I can bring the mix up in you know in no time uh, other desks take me a little longer just to kind of uh because i don't have the files ready i don't mm-hmm. have i i don't have uh, anything going into it so i just have to start from scratch and then just go 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 yeah what's one of the the worst experiences i guess you've had like maybe um hmm. troubleshooting wise or right during a show a microphone goes out and it just cannot be fixed i mean <laughs> so uh i don't know if it's the worst one i okay so i i got two uh, one mm. was in, uh, we're in Jakarta, we're in J- Jakarta, Indonesia, and I had my laptop set up. I play the the uh, the intro tracks for uh, for MXPX, the the intro kind of walkout music, and you know they're coming out all good. Um, it gets, I I'm I am supposed to mute it on my console. It's supposed to be programmed to mute on my console and mute the stage, and it muted the stage. But what it did in mute was the front, the the um, the front man's uh, Mike Herrera, his uh, his in ears. So there was music playing in his ears while he's singing the first song, and he's trying to jam out. And there's music playing, and I had no idea it was happening. He kept giving me like this weird kind of, you know, something, yeah, something. Yeah. There's yeah, there's like what hellfire. A tornado. And, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm looking around, like, yeah. what the hell, you know, trying to see if there's a house gonna fall on me. And and yeah, and there was just, I, I don't know what the hell was going on. So. Did that for a few seconds, and finally he's like, he's like, Andy, the intro is on. In the mi- and we we're in a in a there was thousands of people. There was a huge festival. Yeah, and we we're headlining this festival Saturday night, sold out. And he just says, I'm like, fuck. So I just grab my laptop and I pull everything out and, and push it to the side. And you know the rest of the show was good, but to this day I'm not. They they don't they don't let me they don't let me um, live it down. It's, oh, really? I'm constantly reminded of it. Hey, Andy, play and that intro for us, please. Yeah, yeah. Or no, like, hey, Andy, I think we, I think the intro's on still, and it's been like <laughs> seven months. Um, that's, that's the, the, the first one that comes to mind. Second one, as far as uh, technical stuff, was um, doing this live record, like I said, with his band Slick Shoes uh, over at the House of Blues. Yeah. Um, at some, I mean, it, there was, there was a the House a, of Blues over in Anaheim. In Anaheim. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so there was a lot of uh, issues kind of leading into it, a lot of technical stuff that was kind of, you know, kind of killing it for me. But we got through it. Show's going well. Everything's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at some point, one of the guys, he, I think he jumps off his monitor, kicks it over, and, and, and pulls uh, the mic cable for, for the, the, the singer. Or something happens, and the mic's dead. And he's he's in the middle of a song, singing the song, and, and you know it, it's a punk show. Everyone's running around. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, you can't hear him. Can't hear a thing. So I'm like, shit. So I have a panic attack. I run up there, and, and this is just me. We didn't have any. I didn't have any like stage, stage hands guys. And, yeah, yeah, there was nobody there to help me really. So I ran up there. I grab his mic, and I see that the cables popped out, and, mm-hmm. and but it's like broken. The connector's mm-hmm. busted. So I start trying to pull it. I realize that I had uh, I had taped the cable. I kind of folded it over and taped the cable onto the microphone so he could like spin it around and do whatever he wanted to do. You know, that, mm. a punk show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Holy shit!" There's a, there's like three quarters of a of a of a whole of a roll of of e tape on this. Like, oh what shit! The fuck? Did and you have I, a, like a box cutter or like a blade? My on backpack you? happened to be under the stage. I had left it there. Oh, you so left I, out. I pulled pulled the knife out in front of like the barricade was you know three feet away from me everyone's just kind of jumping on the barricade and i pull a knife out and everyone just kind of like what the hell yeah. and even the even the security guards like what the hell and i go to the thing cut it whatever replace it it's all good but we missed like you know a song and a half of of, of vocals. vocals yeah so yeah i mean he couldn't go to like uh, the bassist mic or well, he did he did but it was just kind of i mean it was just all kind of chaos and and that wasn't measured out quite as as um 
you know, the, the, the EQ on that was different than the mic he was using. It was a different microphone. There's a lot of different, you know, little things involved that made it sound different, you know. Yeah. Um, Does your family ever go with you on these uh, trips around the world? Uh, not the long run stuff. Not Nothing too far. Um, I brought brought my wife out to, uh, we the uh, MXPX had a, like a big anniversary show, 25 anniversary uh, last year. And all the crew, everybody brought out, you know, families, and it was just kind of a big celebration. So they they brought her out then. Mm-hmm. But as far as that goes, it's mostly because it's so quick run, and you know, it's just get to the airport, do two days of shows, get back, you know, get back to the airport, get my ass home. Yeah, it's not really, you know, it's not really conducive to any sort of like vacation atmosphere. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, change a little bit of subject. I want right. to talk about your your little boy, Adam. <laughs> I see on yeah. your I see on your Instagram uh, he's all over the drum set. He's on the kit. He's on the kit. Yeah. He's gonna need some lessons soon. So I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a call. Give me a holler, man. Yeah. I mean, I, as you can see, we're sitting. Well, people can't see, but uh, <laughs> I mean, we're sitting in my room yeah. right now, and I have a full drum set set up. You got it all ready to go. Ready yeah, to go. Yeah, I dig it. I I uh, I'm I'm envious that uh, that you can have it all set up all the time. Uh, it's That's only it's rad. only four microphones. I actually need to get a couple more uh, Tom mics, but I think uh not too far away yeah yeah man but yeah it's uh definitely yeah he's uh he's he's on the kit and um when did you notice that he uh was picking that up was he just hitting pot and pans like the cliche kind of thing that everyone does or? yeah kind of it was just it was uh so we just <clears throat> we got him this this little toy one this little uh actually my mom his grandma got him this uh this plastic one for uh-huh. for christmas and it's just you know the one where the little tom stick to the top of it and it's like it's a tiny little thing yeah. it comes in a little plastic box not and, barely tunable you just kind right of, yeah. right right it's just all it's all plastic pieces yeah um and that was it yeah christmas and we you know put it in front of the tv and we throw on music videos that's like on the weekend like we don't we we have some sort of distraction there, but we mostly want it to be music, and we put on a lot of like. Uh, he really enjoys. Uh, do you want it. him to become a musician? I do. It's gonna be a tough life, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Yeah. So that uh, he could be well, especially if he picks up drums now, he could be the backbone right. to to whatever band that you come right. out with in the future. Right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I can uh, I can definitely yeah, use him as like one of my hard guns. Van. Uh, not not so much the uh, Jacksons. Yeah. There was some problems there with the yeah, Jacksons. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Let's, let's maybe Just a little bit of problems. Let's deviate from the whole Jackson analogy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool though, man. Right. Like get them while they're really young, and I think it's always great. Like to. Like you know, pass that musicianship on to a younger generation. You know. Yeah, I think it's important, man. It just, it just, you know, it opens up their mind so much more. I feel, you know, it does. Especially at their young age, they're soaking everything up like a sponge. Absolutely, and they just, they just get it. He, yeah. he, he loves the music. You know, he, he picks and chooses the songs he likes. He's got a pretty good, yeah, it's a pretty good palette. I like it. You know, yeah. obviously, a lot of it's the stuff that that I listen to, but even you know things like. Um, well, what like, what band or song does he really gravitate towards? Like, Daddy, put that on. He was really he's uh really been into um. What is her name? Mon Mon La Mon La Farte Mon La Farte or something. Like that. It's it's I don't a. Know. Uh, I don't think I've heard of that. It's a uh, she's a um. I think she, she's a female vocalist, uh, Latina. She plays like she did a a song with um. With Juanes and stuff like that, he's really into okay. that. He really loves uh, Bruno Mars. He he can watch that halftime show from 2014, dude, all day. That, I could watch it all day. I, yeah, me too. That is probably like the best. That's the best ever. halftime show it's yeah. ever been, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. really think there's anything else. That Nothing's really gonna it. top that. Yeah, no way. It's pretty fucking bad. Ass. Yeah, so he can watch that all the time, and you know, and and there's a lot of you know anything that I'm I'm mixing and working on. He'll, he'll you ever, pick up the lyrics. You ever throw in any like Cannibal Corpse or anything like that, or is that a little too? Uh, no Cannibal Corpse, not yet. Not, but, not yet. You know, he's still young. We can, we can, you know, we can, we can uh, lean him toward that. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah, yeah. Why not? It's all. It's it, all part does of he, it. Uh, does he hit on anything else? Like, does he uh, get a broomstick and start trying to air guitar or, or do anything um, like that? He has a little plastic little guitar thing, and um, especially when, like when Coco came out. He would not let that thing go. He, he, you know, he'd have his little guitar yeah. next to him, and you know, when the kids playing "Remember Me" on the thing, and he's just, you know, he's he's going for it. He's, yeah. He anything he sees with with that movie, he's all about. I haven't it. had a chance to see it, but I heard it's oh, a man. freaking tearjerker. You, yeah. Don't yeah. don't don't have wine that night because you're, you're just gonna be <laughs> crying the whole the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. From beginning to end. Beginning to end. Yeah. It's it's uh. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm a sucker to those kinds of movies, man. I can't really handle that. Yeah, it's very much. I mean, for me, it's just the the whole little 
the whole Pueblo and the whole, you know, premise of that movie and everything. It was, you know, it just reminds me of my grandparents. It reminds me of my grandfather who passed away a few years ago. And it's just kind of like, it's exactly, it's kind of what I thought, it's it's kind of what I felt that I needed to watch to kind of get over and not get you. over it, but to really kind of uh, make sense of what is, you know, um, the, the, the theory of the afterlife and Dia de los Muertos. And, and they, they kind of, they... They skew it a little bit, but it's kind of a cool story to kind of make it like, oh, so that's what it, you know, that's what it's about. That's what the day is for. That's what the kind of fusion between, you know, um, like the, life cele- and the, the celebration, the celebration of life, the, 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 the one day to kind of, um, have, you know, those who have passed kind of come visit and things like that. And I mean, it's, it's cool. It, it was, a it was a great premise. They, they worked, you know, they skewed it a little bit in, into a way that makes sense for a Disney movie, but mm-hmm. I mean, I loved it. It was a great movie. I, I can watch it with my boy, like, whenever. How old is he now? He's three. Three years old. He, coming three. on four this year, or is it next year? Uh, Four March next year, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it's crazy. What, what kind of drum set is he playing right now? He is playing is an it SPL? SPL, yeah. It's a little maple, like, I don't know how many plies it is. I, I, I'd seen it before, but, yeah, it's a, it's a little maple, maple SPL. Um, the snare, I think is like a little 12 inch snare. It's got a 10 inch Tom and a, a 12 inch floor Tom. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool, man. It's, it's, uh, you know, I was able to tune the snare pretty decent and I threw in a little, uh, little, uh, Remo, uh, they make the control sounds, I yeah. think. Oh yeah. Yeah. A little 12. tiny, something like a, just a real dense kind of thick, yeah. you know, ply thing just so it can just be fairly dry. Cause and you have certain hours. Loud. Yeah. And you have certain hours that he's able to. Play, right i mean or, I is, probably, or does he just wake up at six in the morning Daddy. I, I probably should have hours I, sh- I should probably um or maybe put silent strokes on that kid or something that'd be a good idea i need to do something because it's not going well it's loud yeah. <laughs> you're not getting no rest that right no, up, no, right after a tour he you know he yeah that's that's the thing on weekends so if i get home and my ears are kind of hurting through through uh you know the shows i've done and and you know being out and doing all that stuff and i get home i'm like all right i'm relaxing you know watch a movie beer whatever and just and he and he's relentless with that crash symbol. It's just that's what he what he gravitates toward. And I'm just like, he doesn't wear any ear protection or anything. He just um, yeah, we give him we give him just like the like kind of the ones you're you're wearing. He's well, got like well, little kid, the kid ones. Yeah. yeah, the little kid muffs with the with the um. It's like a little purple one. Yeah, and, yeah. There's also um. I'm, I mean, I'm sure you've probably seen it. There's also uh, silent symbols. I have a I have a yeah. pair around here somewhere. Those are the ones with the little holes in it, right? Yeah, the whole dude man, so quiet. I think I'm gonna like my I'm brother could be sleeping in the next room. I could crash on it, and yeah. it does not bother him at all. So I it's think like that 80, might... they call it L eighty symbols because like eighty right. decibels less than what a actual symbol is. Oh so wow, it's okay, a pretty significant yeah, amount. That's, that's of sound that's reduced, almost silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely um, that is a uh, that's a Christmas gift idea right there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have to do that gift for him, but mostly for myself. You know. When you think about it, it's a gift for everybody. Yeah, yeah I think it, yeah. it it helps everyone around. Yes. you know, especially the neighbors. Um, so when you do come back from tour and you're just hanging out on the weekends, are you just mostly relaxing around the house, or do you like to go get some shit done around the house? Or I'd I'd like to try probably to make time get for some more things done, but um, you know, just I, I get home and and it's often kind of you know Sunday afternoon. So by that point, it's like let's go grab some dinner. Let's you know I hadn't I haven't seen my son you know throughout whatever be it a week be it couple of weeks or just a few days it's yeah. like i want to you know let me remind him that i'm his hang father out. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like hey i'm back and and now the the um you know and i don't go out too too often you know i've got i've got friends who are out all you know all year all year long and mm. things like that and you know and i don't want to uh to tour that much all the time because you know i have my responsibilities at home i have my son at home so well, even if want... you if you didn't though would you want to um if i didn't yeah i mean if if it was if it was just me if, of course you know that's that's what i kind of worked you enjoy toward. the traveling you enjoy yeah the- yeah absolutely i enjoy the travel i enjoy the whole thing and it's just uh yeah it's an amazing experience and yeah i would go out but this is better you know this is better than than the travel it's like i go out i do a little bit then i come home and it's like my wife and my son are there and, and it's that, just you have that anchor you yeah, know you. yeah it's it's that anchor and and it's it's not so much an anchor it is the catalyst to do it again it's you know it's it's kind of funny how it worked out as as far as when i really everything that i've uh attempted to do 
as far as forwarding career or or just kind of do like cool shows or any anything it's it's always kind of been a catalyst to you know my my family's always been kind of the catalyst for it so when i found out my son was going to be born i was like okay i really got to get this going so i jump in and and uh you know i take a dive toward a different company and and it works out you know and and all of a sudden you know i was i was in one company and now it's it's something it's for my career it's bigger and broader and there's just more you know there's more things i can do with it i learned a million more things about audio and live audio and mixing and all this stuff and that worked. And when I wanted to propose, you know, earlier than that, when I was proposing to my wife, I reached out to, to the band and then that becomes a whole thing. So every thing that I've done is, is because of my family, yeah. you know, because of this little unit that I have. Yeah. So, so I, I guess you can say anchor, but it's more, it's more the catalyst of why I'm doing all this stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Is there, um, as far as working at a VR tour sound, do you have like um, any other goals as far as like maybe beyond that, or do you want to just expand within that and you know, kind of grow from there? I really, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm working hard on on growing within the company. Um, my position right now is is pretty cool. I got to learn a lot, a lot of the technical aspects, a lot of the kind of inner workings of the company, how it works, how the industry works. You know, I was, yeah. I was really kind of, uh, you know. A little naive, you know, to really see yeah, the, the yeah. background of it, like how yeah, there's things just, really there's get done. So much, there's so much involved, and and when you work at you know, with what I do in audio, when you work at like uh, like we both, you know, I I'm I came from center staging, yeah, center staging. You work there, and audio is kind of, I mean, it's there, it's important, but it's kind of second to everything else that's going on. So it's like you you can. You know, and I, I had an opportunity to mix a lot of bands, a lot of like top tier artists. I, I got to mix kind of everyone, which is awesome, but that's just kind of where it's at. And that, then that's and the ceiling. That's right the there. ceiling. Yeah. You hit, yeah, you hit the ceiling. You hit the glass ceiling fairly quickly when it comes to audio. Yeah. And um, and just having, yeah, having gone to VER, and and now there's there's um, we we just now are in a merger with another company, and the opportunities are kind of just gonna keep growing. So. I don't know. It's it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. I'm excited to kind yeah. of see what see what happens and, and well, move forward within my company and yeah. Uh, and within that merger, what uh, what other opportunities can come up from that? What what I'm trying to go toward, which is which is not too, uh, which doesn't deviate too far from what I do now, as far as uh, as far as like building the the gear and kind of and helping in design and things like that. Mm. Um, I want to lean toward project managing. So essentially, I just deal with you know i deal with my clients you know deal with my clients um design the gear for them kind of be consistent with my clients and more of a it's kind of a an in-between of the of the tech side versus the sales side and just kind of uh you know just it's the next step it's yeah. the next natural a step little less of the heavy lifting kind of stuff a little yeah, yeah a little a little less of the actual you know carrying the screw gun plugging everything in a little less of that more of the of the design work and more of the you distributing know, just, like right. whatever little task to whoever else. Okay. Right, right, yeah, yeah, definitely. Management position, basically. Yeah, yeah, in a sense. Yeah. yeah. So so that's that's the next step. That's the next um I guess natural step. Uh next year so I'm supposed to be kind of heading out a little bit more, um doing more large format shows within the company. Um and then, you know, it's just kind of a natural progression to to whatever else whatever else happens. Any plans to um get any of your old bands back together or maybe start another band? I've been wanting to start something for a long time and and it, it it's frustrating cuz I have all the, you know I have all the gear there. I can I can make a record from home and but it's just like, you know, the, the time. time the time and yep. and you know when I get when I'm when I'm not working that time is for for my family. family. Yeah. yeah, it's for my son, it's for my wife. So um eventually yeah, it'll 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 happen. I'll put something together even if it's just like a few songs or just just jam or just something or anything you know i'd like to it's just i guess when the time is right and when when time allows yeah you know? yeah but you it doesn't ever um frustrate you that maybe you're not in a band or not doing any of those kinds of things i miss it i miss it a lot oftentimes the performing side of the it the performing side of it the the performing the the um you know the creating side of it you know just just mixing this uh this last record that i did with fozzies i've been mixing it a lot this week uh, kind of trying to trying to prime it for like a Spotify release, and 
I'm redoing some of the, some of my vocal parts back uh, backing vocal parts. And I'm yeah. like, damn, I miss this. This is this is fun, you know. It kind of it takes me back, you know. Because it's not only a band I'm mixing; it's like myself and yeah, yeah, yeah. So and you yeah. do all every all these recordings, or 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 you work on them at your house, or you're doing them at for the studio? most part. For the most part, uh, I do it at home. There's um, we have a a lockout. The full Fozzie's Hero. Uh, some of the guys from there have a lockout. Uh, on in North Hollywood, where get some of the recording done. But are they still playing? Um, they play once in a while. I, I see that right. So there was a there was a new kind of iteration of the band um, that happened late last year, which uh, which included um, bass player and guitar player, and and that was so so half the band essentially. And then they they got uh, new guys. It wasn't till later too, right? Like I mean, right. when they first started off, you weren't in the band, right? Right, so so they started in two thousand one. Okay, I joined the band. Uh, they did a like a a demo or whatever two thousand two, um, and then an EP in two thousand three. I joined the band and we made an album. We made our first record in two thousand five, and that that actually that was fun. We we did a lot with that. Uh, we got on K Rock. We had it. We had it kind of spinning on K Rock for a while, which was kind of like you know surreal. It was yeah. surreal. It was crazy. Like, like we have a song on the radio. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did that, and then put another uh, another album out. Actually, we recorded another album in two thousand eight. Didn't come out. We uh, we all just kind of split up. I went back to school. Everyone just kind of did their thing. Yeah. Then came back in two thousand twelve, and I mixed it, finished it, and just just kind of just gave it out. We did a couple of reunion shows, and then in twenty fourteen. A, uh, a a label approached us to to kind of you know make a record and kind of do the band again, and uh, so yeah we did that and then that's kind of right when I was uh, I was gonna gonna uh, be a dad so we we made the record I didn't mix it somebody else mixed it and then I I just kind of stepped away because I was just you know fatherly duties and just kind of just life yeah. was happening life was yeah. happening for me so you know. Um, and then everyone just kind of did their thing. It worked for a bit, and everyone's just kind of everyone's working now. Everyone's got their careers, and you know, it's it just kind of is what it is. But yeah, um, every one every once in a while, you guys kind of get yeah together yeah. And, and then once thing. we do, it's kind of like back to it's like back to where it was. You know, that, that's the that's the best part about it is we can do a show, you know, twice a year and call up you know and just just put it out online and a bunch of our old friends show up and it's just kind of like right back where we were. We're all twenty one again, and we're all just kind of you know. Having fun for one night, we're all twenty one again. Everyone gets babysitters, and it's like, this is it. This is awesome. Yeah, and everybody goes back. It almost feels like no responsibilities. You know? Yeah, yeah, almost too much to some people because people get really wasted at those shows oftentimes. Yeah. But you know, yeah, it's fun. Are yeah. there any shows coming up for Aussies? I don't know. We, we do. Um, we do. We do like w- one guaranteed show every year is in, is uh, St. Patrick's Day, like around that around March, um, mm. and we've done that pretty consistently. Um, even when we weren't a band anymore, we just kind of always did it. So that will probably happen. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe when this mix is out, down and we kind of announce that we're just kind of pushing out the old records again and people can download it. I don't know, maybe something, something will come of it. I oh, don't that'd know. be cool. I look forward to it. Man. Yeah, man. You know, something. I haven't seen Fozzie's in, it's been years for me. Yeah. I don't think I've, I've seen the, the recent iteration with you in it. Right. Right, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Then that must have been a long time ago. Very long time ago. Shows. Yeah, hey, remember the backyard shows? Uh, imagine doing that now. Like just some people, getting the old. Some bands. people hate on that, and I look back definitely with nostalgia. Like it was a very raw type of attitude that everybody had. Just go in there, carry your amps, and figure yeah, it out. You just know? go, just go and figure it out. And then, and then you know, for us, the Silmar scene was was a pretty robust music scene you know it was yeah i think when i grew up i was um i was in a punk band and we mostly were in the pacoima area i remember a few times coming over here what band was that uh parasite that was my first punk I band remember i remember seeing uh flyers yeah it flyers, was, yeah yeah i still got them like somewhere stored away but um yeah that was like i was only a couple months in playing guitar and then i ended up finding some people and we had a band together and yeah, and going back into like that whole backyard scene, man, I, I don't know. There was nothing like it. It was, it was, it was all kids. Yeah, fucking just, just kids, every, just, just kids is fucking having a ball. Dude. Kids going rip shit, but still being super organized about it all. Everything was just really just yeah. you know, 
we'd all go to CVS. We'd all cut cut up the the uh, the flyers. We'd all hand them out. Oh, Everyone yeah. would go show up. You know, it would always be you know three bands wherever in Silmar, San Fernando, Pacoima, or Alida. Yeah, yeah. And obviously just, over here there was like mindsets. Uh, was mindsets. By, was there by any, the mantle? Was was or was that I more? I don't remember. That's probably more Pacoima. I just remember my, mindsets. NAD all the time, uh, yeah. liquor and poker, uh-huh. uh, poor pirates yeah. was always a thing. Poor pirates, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else? Who else? There was uh, Inner Mind was was uh yeah. See those are, yeah. You're naming like a lot of Silmar type bands. Yeah. I I have a I had like Sinisa, Lost Identity, Lost Identity, yeah, uh, Tense, uh, or Minor Authority. Minor Authority was one. Subject Nine. Subject um, Nine, yeah, yeah. Subject Nine. Those that's uh. I'm tripping out right now trying to think of more, yeah. but uh. Yeah, what the was, fuck, it was, man? It was a lot. It, it was in in each one. Yeah, each scene had their like their best band. Yeah, and then you know it's like you you know Silmar was like NAD mindsets and and you know Pacoima would be like uh, I don't know, liquor and poker or whoever yeah. you know. And then they they do one show together and it'd be like fucking crazy, you know. And or it'd be on the uh, the liquor and poker line. You remember the phone the phone line? The, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it'd be like, all right, check it out. All right, we got this. Dude, that, that was so innovative <laughs> for back then because that was before, it was before anybody had the MySpace kind of shit. It was you know? it was social media before social media. Yeah, yeah. It, it and it worked. That's how organized we were and we had to be now it's just like one click and it just goes and everybody knows about it yeah and it, but even if they do know about it nobody gives a shit yeah yeah that's, what, that's so, what it feels like yeah. yeah because it's so it's just so dense with with information so dense with 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 uh you know things to do that no one wants to do anything anymore there's just too many options so yeah. it's like before it was like all right well, this is friday now it's just netflix is, and chill you know? yeah <laughs> this was friday before we had this flyer yeah we're gonna go to you know to beachy street and go to some backyard show and fuck shit up yeah there's a one dollar paps at the show let's go yeah exactly and and it was you know we're 17 who cares we're gonna do it <laughs> yeah back then though i didn't drink or anything but i man like being uh playing a lot in pacoima man there was so many sketch moments like back there I, i'm not sure bad. i was in the silmar scene but uh you know, there's good and bad people in all scenes. So yeah, I just remember seeing a lot of crazy ass shit growing up back then. You know. Yeah, there there was there was one time where I was like, holy shit. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's a million of them, but the one that comes to mind was um, I was driving out. I, was, I had my my mom's uh, Ford Explorer. Of course, I was driving out. Put all my gear in the back of the truck. I was driving out, and this guy uh, coming coming this way, like uh, opposing, coming toward me on the street. Mm was swerving in the middle and intentionally crashing into parked cars. Going left and right, boom, 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 and just, mm-hmm. like, clipping parked cars. He was all wasted. I think he would stolen the car. You know. He better be wasted, be doing some shit like that. Yeah, and it was out, it was actually, it was on Beachy Street over there. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't even imagine, like, walking out and seeing my fucking car, like, totaled like that. I, yeah. Uh, whatever, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I mean... I've seen people, obviously, I'm sure like you have, uh, people throw down and fight. Yeah. I've seen was, uh, people was... get stabbed, uh, mm-hmm. all that shit. And how we got through it, I don't know. We were like 14, 15 years old and just lived through it. And it just and that's what was. It's just yeah, like we didn't it, know anything uh, else, so yeah, this we, is how we Yeah, I was like, I wasn't like freaked out. I was like, well, I'm not going to play shows anymore. I was like, no, I can't wait for yeah. the next one. Yeah, but. so this bottle got broken over that dude's head well i'm sure it's gonna happen next week yeah. too and it's i've always been a it. guy where i've always been pretty cool with everybody so yeah. i think yeah. that kind of helped too you know i wasn't yeah i mean looking, looking for trouble yeah know? exactly especially by by both of our stature it's not <laughs> yeah. it's not really conducive yeah, five, to five six fight. ain't gonna yeah. do it yeah no. <laughs> five six and fucking skinny like a twig it's yeah, not so, happening you yeah know? i don't think you're really we're, we're not gonna win many rounds is what i'm saying no yeah but you know i gotta i got a lot of heart though Damn, yeah, that's, really that's where it takes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But yeah, it was it was good times. I mean, the, the memories off of that, and and just doing the legwork, doing the, you know, going to the CVS and cutting cutting out the um, you flyers know, the flyers, and... or you, you like you really go for it. You go to Office Depot, you cut out flyers, and they're and they're like blue and green. You yeah, know, the different really colors. Gotta, yeah, that's when you, that's Fancy when you're stepping pants. it up. Yeah, that's, that's when you know the show is gonna be good. Um, you know, things like that, and you know, having mom drive you everywhere to, to you know mom, my mom used to drive me to shows yeah I'm yeah yeah sure my parents all yeah. all the time yeah that was all the time yeah 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 and and for me when i joined fozzie's that was kind of a weird thing because everyone was already you know 
a few years older, you know, a couple of guys were already 21. I was the 16 year old kid joining the band, you know, so, so I'd get picked up from school by them to go to go rehearse, you know, so it's just kind of a, and did you also expect like, Oh, these guys are, we're going to be drinking right now. I got to kind of keep up with that. And then they were like probably really chill. I would assume. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't really, as far as like drinking, they didn't really push me toward it so much. I did eventually. He's just like, all right, like that's what's what, and all right, you know, when you're when you're eighteen, nineteen, then eventually you just kind of just whatever. Oh, okay, so you're doing it illegally, all right? Illegal? Hey, don't tell anybody. Hey, man, you telling the world right now, bro? Oh, I gotta go. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's you know, it was back in the day. But um, yeah, man, I miss those days. Yes, I yeah. do. I do miss them, and um. Maybe one day we'll have a resurgence or something like that again. But it'd be, it'd be it may cool. not be our generation. I don't think so. I don't think so. And and I wonder. I wonder what the music scene is now, as far as just like in in town here. Because, I mean, even even when I was when I wasn't doing the backyard shows anymore, I would I, you'd see them. You drive by and you'd see you'd hear, you know, some crash cymbals down the street. Yeah. You know, hear something somewhere. Oh, you hear it here like every weekend. Yeah, like somewhere around. You know, there's yeah. somebody fucking playing. Yeah. You know, if it's, is that if it's still not a thing? I don't know. I haven't heard it lately. I hear some some bands around here do, but then I also hear a lot of mariachi and banda around. Oh yeah, too. banda that, for that, sure, that for sure. Yeah, that but, makes but me that, think I should have fucking joined banda. Then yeah. I would have been getting yeah, paid. Yeah, should have bought a timbal, man. That's 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 what's missing in this room right now. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, I got congas and bongos. I don't have that though, but I got plenty at center staging, so I could always yeah. run one oh, out. That's right. There's some there's some prime timbales over there oh, too. There's so much shit to take advantage of over there. Tell me about center staging. I, I miss it? I miss the place. How how's the uh, how's the dynamic now? It's a whole new uh, no whole new vibe, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we just moved into um, a new warehouse right yeah. around the corner on Ontario Street, so it's like Winona, Ontario. Right. And um, yeah, it's a lot cleaner, air conditioned, which is greater. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just trying to expand on that. I guess uh, what Mitch is just trying to do is make the whole thing look like a big showroom. You know, they has keyboards, okay. drum department, and guitars. Mm-hmm. All in like the the half of the warehouse and audio still in the old warehouse, which uh, they are very lonely over there. Every time yeah. I talk to them, like oh, I'm fucking bored over here. No yeah. one to talk to. Ah oh, man, but uh, it's good as far as that. Um, we do have new people here and there that pop in. I I saw a lot of uh, I get drivers. I think the turnover on drivers is kind of the thing, right? There's always yeah here and there. We had uh, <laughs> there there were some drivers that uh that were working there before. I'm not gonna name names, but uh. Mm-hmm. Some of them crashed some trucks, oh, shit. like, uh, or just d- did dumb shit and with the trucks and di- didn't tell anybody. I think I know of a story or two, yeah. Yeah, or driving it into um like a parking garage, but it's not it's fucking. Not, yeah, yeah, all of a t- sudden it peels open like a can, yeah, like a it, can of oh. tuna. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, so I panicked. So I just like so brought just it back and I le- and I clocked out and I left. I was like, really? You should just told somebody. Right? Yeah, be honest. Yeah, that's... but I but I understand the fear probably gets you and you don't know what sure. to do, so you just yeah. Panic. I mean, it's. It, yeah. People do dumb things. We do dumb things all the But it's good time. though. I was telling a couple people a uh, couple people there, uh Dustin, my my boss. I yeah. told him uh, I was talking to you today and uh do you know Josh Bales? Yeah. I told him I was gonna be interviewing you tomorrow or which right. is today and he was like, Oh shit. Tell him yeah. to say what's up. So Yeah, man. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's I miss a lot of I miss kinda everybody back over there. Yeah. You know. Isaac Ron- Isaac just left. Isaac left. Yeah. Okay. I think uh Sunday was his last day. He wow. surprised me with that one. I was working and he came yeah. in. Yeah. I think he's working on. Uh, he's, he's doing, he's doing he's grip, doing, grip yeah, work. He's now. doing grip work. He's uh, he's working with uh, with Vince. Yeah, with Vince. Yeah, yeah that, that's, and, that's really good yeah. though, man. Like, yeah, Vince. Because I, I mean, know he was there for a good five six years, and he kind of needed to. Yeah, I, I brought to I brought expand Isaac in back in the day, and um, and yeah, I mean, like like you know, it's it's a uh, center staging is a great place to work, but it is a stepping stone to the next. Oh thing, yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. And um and you ha- and you have you know one has to use it as a stepping stone and and it's a great place to network, so yeah yeah and also you know if you work there, you could rent everything for free. So. Oh man, I miss the, that. The the I perk of that. that. Yeah yeah. When I get frustrated sometimes about the job, I think about that and I'm like, oh yeah yeah. This is this fucking is, this pretty is fucking. It, sick. This is what it's all. About. Yeah. <laughs> like my favorite kit, my favorite drum kit there was the gray the primer gray, gray maple primer gray. DW? Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Oh, God. I think there was one time you had MXPX coming through for rehearsal for like maybe a one off or something. something. And I yeah. and I think I might have sent that because I remember you telling me that. Yeah. And I sent that to the rehearsal. Yeah. 
That's true. Yeah. Oh, you remember that? I remember it. I remember it showing up. Yeah. And I was like, they sent me the gray one. That's fucking awesome. That was me, bro. That was me. <laughs> well, thank I'm you very much. Oh, okay. We just did a white guy high five. Are we trying to get? All right. There you go. A little bit better. A little bit better. <laughs> Dude, that kid does sound fucking good, though. It's great. Right? Something. Something about that. I don't know. It's just either the way the edges of the of the the bearing edges are cut, or yeah, you throw like f- with that. It was it was because for me it was it's it's a balance of of attack between between body. It was just it doesn't it doesn't snap as much as uh as as some other ones do. It's more a little more body, a little more kind of depth. There's just yeah. kind of more to it. But it kind of it dissipates just enough to where yeah. it doesn't over ring right. too much. Yeah, yeah, it dries. It it's yeah, it's it's nice and dry. The, the whole thing, it's just, the whole kit, even with even the the snare. Like usually I would pick a you know, like the standard pick like a a, a Black Beauty or something like that. Oh. But that one just the snare itself, the snare that comes with the kit, that that gray one's great. Yeah, I believe it's, it has like two of them. Is that the, the? It has a deep one, right? It has a, like d- a six d- inch one. Yeah, like a six five and a five or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, the six five. I've I've recorded a couple of records with that one. Yeah. I love that thing. I have to try it myself. We do have. Um, I mean, I I don't know how long you haven't been there, but I mean, uh, since you haven't, I think there's about a good four or five new DW kits yeah. there now. I remember. Yeah, and, I. Uh, they, they're pretty they fucking good. Had, they had two, um, like this hybrid ply. Kind of thing that Maple they mahogany. just got. Yeah, it was like some weird hybrid thing. Dude, they those were like fucking, sparkle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. The black oyster. Yeah. Yeah. Those. There was two of them, and they they came in like the last week that I was there, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure you guys got a million new. Yeah, things. yeah. We got new sonar kits. Uh, new Ludwig, Tama. I mean, it's all good. I mean, and even then, like going into learning about the the woods and the way the edges are cut and then all of a sudden all the skins that you put on all the different types yeah. of skins it's just There's so much variation yeah and it what works with one drum wouldn't work with the other you exactly know? and even then that's all subjective anyway because mm-hmm. i know what i like to hear but i just try to pull, yeah. pull a good tone out of it when I do yeah that, and, you know? and and it all you know even per depends on on what you're playing who you're playing with the type of music it's yeah. like everything has its place yeah like today i was setting up a kit and it was like ambassadors which are the the thinnest right. the skin had them all around the kit so it was the jazz kit mm-hmm. and uh i had to kind of remember that jazz was a little a higher pitch mm-hmm. so the floor time i had to make sure it was like, like tuned up real nice you know yeah and- after so many kits that i've been setting up everything is just but everything was yeah. Oh, yeah. And you do a bunch of the uh, the the hip hop snare, right? The full dead, just. Poof, yeah. Oh, yeah. Poof, side snare. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, man. And and yeah, a lot of these players, man. I mean, learning from them and the way that they set up is that much more knowledge within myself, you yeah. know. And I could kind of see what they like, and I try different things. You can see on my drum kit, I have about three different skins. I have like an Evans, yeah, a Remo Ebony, and this hydraulic right. red. The red one, we had those. I had never seen those before. We had um, all hydraulic reds in um, in Indonesia. Yeah. And yeah, in Jakarta, we're like, what the hell is this? It's yeah. it's red. I'm like, all right. Well, Fucking, I mean, it works. It, sounds, it looks it cool. great. Oh, yeah. The color doesn't mean anything as far as the thickness of the skin. It's just, right. it's just colors there. I think I've seen them in uh, black, like opaque yeah. black, red, blue, and clear. Yeah. yeah. I, I had never seen any red Evans, but yeah. right, cool. Evans hydraulic on a floor tom, probably got to be one of my favorites. Like no, like you don't have to put any moon gel or anything, right. kind of, anything like that. It's just yeah. I was always into, I was always into emperor, emperor um, coated. Yeah, I was always into coated emperors for for toms. I like vintage emperor clear, on toms are like really fucking nice. For snare, what was I like snare? I I was like the um P seventy seven. The uh, the the what the hell was it? Controls it. Control sound, yeah, it's the one with the dot. In yeah, the, yeah, underneath that, yeah, that or like the the Genera Evans, the Genera dry. Yeah. Oh good. fuck yeah, dude. The, the Evans. Yeah. Any anything from the dry is like, mm-hmm. whether it be a Genera or HD dry. Yeah. It's a trip, man. Like I don't. The science that goes into that, and the people that are like manufacturing these types of heads. I don't, know. I don't I can, know. I couldn't say anything about it. Just I know what it, I know. <laughs> I that know that this sounds good. Yeah, and, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I could pull a decent sound out of it, I'm good. But uh, it all depends on, yeah, the drum and how it's manufactured. You know. Yeah. For we sure. have a. We definitely have a lot of um, discontinued drum sets in our stock right now, which are which is well, I think is pretty cool because it makes us unique. You know. Yeah, that's that's a big thing. That's a that's a market to always kind of uh, have in the back pocket because you will be the only people that have this particular, you know, shell or whatever. Yeah, 
yeah, that's important. Well, what about you? You, I mean, you're you're mainly a guitar player, right? Right. Um, yeah. yeah what, what what are you playing right now? Um, what type? Of I'm guitar? playing. I have let's see. I have three. So I've got uh, as far as my amp goes, I've I've had a, a Mesa Triple Rec mm -hmm. um, with the oversized cab for forever, for like ten years. Um, and I've got a Gibson Les Paul Studio, uh, 2007. What's the color on that? It's the um, it's the what is it? It's the cherry, but without the finish. It's like the wood cherry. Oh, just like a satin finish. Yeah, the satin. Ooh, yeah, that that's one's that one's sexy. good. And that the sustain on that is is amazing because it's got sustain. Yeah, and that particular one, that particular year. Yeah, it's like heavier than the rest of them. Mm -hmm. it's just the the wood is a little more dense, so it sustains a little better, and just kind of it 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 goes on for days. Um, I got that. That's been my one guitar that I've always. It's gone through. I've gone through a bunch of guitars. That's been the one that just always stays with me. Like yeah. it'll never. I'll Tried never. Tried and true. Yeah. yeah, that's that's my go-to. Um, I recently got a um, a Les Paul Junior, which is pretty cool. I uh, changed out the pickup. Changed out kind of everything about it. Is it just a single pickup on that one? A single yeah, hum humbucker. It's a like it's that? a single um, P90. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just I just recently put a um, uh, P90 kind of st a stacked P90. This company called Lindy Fralin. Um, okay. They design a, a humbucking but P90 kind of tone. Um, so threw that in there, threw different tuners on it, kind of. So Gibson, in 2015, they missed the mark on everything. They ruined themselves in 2015, as Did, far as the, didn't they uh, recently? Was it them? Didn't they uh, sell themselves to another company or something? Gibson. Like that? Gibson, well, they they declared oh. Chapter Eleven, I think bankruptcy. Okay, they declared Chapter Eleven, and they they got rid of, they sold off, I think Roland, and then they stopped doing uh, uh, any of the Roland like software, like Cakewalk. I could be wrong. There's something in there where yeah, where any of the rec the recording software. I, I can't say that I remember either, but I remember yeah. hearing something about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2015, they put out um, these these less or just their whole line. The, the thing that they did, which was insanity was they decided to um put like automated uh pickups or excuse me automated tuners on the on the guitars so it's this like little robo tuner thing yeah that you just play and it kind of just all just kind of fits and whatever it was bullshit yeah it, i i wouldn't trust that at all awful yes so that's the worst fucking thing yeah well, whoever they, thought of that yeah, idea yeah yeah fire they, from life yeah i'm sure i'm sure he is i'm sure he's, <laughs> he's somewhere yeah he's, he, he's he works at uh he works at the arby's um <laughs> and so they did that they also did something with uh with with the with the pickups where they have like this quick release kind of latch so instead of you know just regular soldering where you have your two points whatever you know just soldering it in they have a little quick release kind of plug which deviates from every other type of pickup so you have to get you have to now That's have adapters oh wow yeah you have to now have adapters and you have to like get in there and cut it and splice things together and and to make it work basically they wanted you if you're buying a gibson you're buying gibson pickups and this is how and oh it's so easy to just like replace them because you pull it out and you just plug it in like a like a plug into a wall no. problem with that is nobody really likes the gibson pickups yeah, and you exclude yeah, everything else. Everyone else. Yeah, so they like, wanted. You, you can only be us. It's they like, wanted to corner their market. No, and no, that's and not how you do it. Immediately, everyone freaked the fuck out, and people started making adapters for them, and this and that, and people replaced all their pickups. The pickups are good, but the fact that they have this this extra step adapter, to, to yeah, make it work, yeah, which yeah. was it was I don't know, it just it didn't make sense. But um, so I bought the guitar. I knew of I knew of the problems. I knew I was going to change some stuff out. But anyway, yeah, I bought the guitar, changed everything out. So it's just basic. It was just a hunk of wood at the end of it, and gutted everything, replaced it, and it's all fine and dandy now. Long story to what that was, but my my uh, yeah that, and then I have a I have a an American uh, Strat, American Strat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that, that one you haven't adjusted anything. Else? Um, I swapped out the pickup for for like a hot stacks, just some, something uh, humbucking, and um, because I was doing a lot of like mana stuff and playing a lot of rock and espanol for a while, yeah. so it's like you got to get that 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 twangy kind of tone, but still I don't want it buzzing the whole time. Um, yeah, that and just various pedals, you know, just kind of random. I have I have a really small pedal board that I just kind of throw in the the little mini pedals on. Yeah, I kind of try and keep it as simple as possible. But oh, that's always the best yeah. way to go. That, I mean, that's why I have just this one up, one down type of deal. Mm -hmm. Like, 
too too many times. I'm not fucking yeah. You don't want to Terry Bazio and yeah, shit. You, you don't want to go full on. Like yeah, no, nah, I'm not into any of that. But uh, I am trying to like incorporate more electronics w- within it. But mm-hmm. who knows? The the possibilities are pretty much endless. Yeah, like I have a about three or four guitars myself. I mainly use just that one right there. That's that it. I I had that. I had that for no. I had the um, and we're talking about the uh, the seventy two deluxe. I had the seventy two custom Fender Tele. So it was the uh, it was the single coil and the plate kind of went over the whole thing. Right. I had that for a while actually. I you know those those guitars that you regret to sell. That was one of that them. That was one of them. That was one of them. Yeah. I I, I wouldn't have sold it. But did it have the the Stratocaster headstock like that? Like no, the, it had the the uh, just t- the t- tele Tally one. Yeah, I had the tele one, and I like that one a lot though. That that was uh oh, it's good, man. Cool. I mean, it's been my guitar for forever. You know. Yeah. I, before that, I had a couple of Ibanezes, but. That's pretty much it right there. Yeah, and that's it's so versatile. You can kind of yeah. do anything with it. Yeah, that's a that's a great one. Yeah, I took it to a guitar shop, uh, Eric's guitar shop to be exact. And uh, Eric, yeah, Eric that used fucking to do a guy, bunch of mine. Eric yeah. used to do a lot of my guitars. Um, yeah, back in the day when when I was you know kind of more just kind of going. Dude is the man. You yeah. know, if you want to get your guitar sounding right on all fucking the whole algorithm or whatever that fretboard is, right? Eric's that guy knows how to do. Eric's it. is good. Um, I would recommend Colin Jensen. Colin, Colin Jensen. Jensen. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, Colin Jensen. He's a uh, he's a guy out of Canoga Park. He's done my guitars for like the last four years, five years. All right. Uh, he does it from home. He's just you know he's just a uh, he's a brain. He's a full on brain, and he just does it. Yeah, he's very just, passionate like, about. Yeah, it. he just and and things like uh, that's what I like about tube people. amps and, yeah. and like he'll he'll fix anything. He'll fix like whatever that you said. If you just give him a a, a pile of wood. He'll he'll turn it into a goddamn Fender Twin Verb. Like he'll do something. You know? <laughs> like it'll it'll work. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So he's he's been. I I I used to go to Eric's a lot. Now I go to I go to this guy Colin. He's been my guy for the last few years. And how did you find him? Um, he used to play in it just kind of bands, kind of just like kind of word of mouth. He used to play in a few bands. Do you, you know any of the guys? Like you know like uh, Eric Trevino or y- or Johan and That's, all those guys. Yeah. 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 All those yeah. guys. Yeah. They 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 played in a band together. And, um, and yeah, he was just kind of like, I just talked to him once. He's like, yeah, man, like, this is what I do on my side stuff. If you ever want any guitars fixed, I'm like, well, shit, here, take all of them. And yeah. And, and he intonates them all. He does, he does yeah, all yeah. of them. Yeah. And when you got him back, you're like, all yeah. right. He's, he's the, he's actually the guy who saved my Les Paul Jr. Like when I was like, God, why did I buy this? This is 2015 sucks. I was like, I was like, here, please do something with it. Make it sound good. And yeah, he just he did all the uh, yeah, like a phoenix from yeah, the ashes, yeah. you know, just just rising. It was amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, man. It's funny. You can just you can kind of like you were saying with with music technology. You realize how much there is to do and how much there is to learn. I it it really is up to the individual and what you whatever you're trying to accomplish. Like you could either not do it and just whatever fuck around and do your thing and live your life or if you're really passionate and you're trying to grow it your your yeah. thing like you could just kind of dive in and there really is no limit there's no limit if you're willing to to dive in full force and just throw all your eggs in this basket yeah. and whatever try, it is try and, anything you know try it out just, just do yeah just do i don't know i'm not trying to be all preachy about anything but no no but that's just, kind of what it is i mean what we're we're the same age right 31 I'm thirty. Yeah, You're yeah. 30? I'm, going, I'm, th- I'm thirty-one in like, what time is it? Yeah, <laughs> no, this, like this like, year. Yeah, yeah, in like a few, like a few weeks, whatever. No, in November. So. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. happy birthday if I don't see you. Yeah. Well, thank you. But uh, yeah, I mean, it it really is up to the individual, like, to really kind of discover that. Yeah, know? and that's and that's kind of like a, I don't know, I don't know if it frustrates me or it's just like if you want to do something, anybody who wants to do anything, just just kind of just do it. I right? think I think. Uh, I think people just have a lot of apprehension in general just from being judged in some way, whether it's sure. uh, whether they built it within themselves or somebody does judge them in some way or fucks around with them in some way, whether it be on social media or See in that. real life. And when they do that, they kind of shut down and don't do it or don't put it out there or put themselves out there. And that, right. you know, you See, can't you can't do that. Like, I, I feel like me getting older is kind of more of like I don't. I don't give a fuck. I just want to put shit up, which is why I kind of started the podcast too, just to right. put shit up. Just you know? do, yeah. Just do things. I don't. I don't care. It's not perfect, but I kind of like that. You know, the right. imperfection is part of myself. You know, sure. And yeah, yeah. It's 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 one of those things. It's 
I don't know. I guess it's tough to explain, but don't don't hold yourself up. Don't hold yourself back. Yeah. Any, anything, anything you want to do, like anyone who has an idea, anyone wants to do anything, just yeah. kind of what moves you. What what what, yeah. what uh excites you? Then do that. Yeah, it, it's that simple. You know, yeah. you you could see it all day on social media with the inspirational quotes, or you're looking at the Gary V's or whatever of the see, world and trying to look like find your way. But just fucking, it's all a matter of just doing. That's, doing it that's that's a weird thing like like the whole so- social media thing and how now it now it is a thing putting you people down on so uh, putting people down rather on social media and it wasn't something that was when you know when it was i guess when i was susceptible to it it wasn't like yeah a, like a thing that was like like putting you down or or i don't know like getting i guess uh bullied on social media and things yeah, like that yeah. and it's it's a very real thing now and it's kind of I think some of it's it weird i guess i don't understand a lot of it i mean i understand when people do it because like sometimes honestly i feel like i i find myself getting frustrated from stuff i see i guess yeah but it's very but, but easy maybe, to get frustrated yeah, yeah and i don't try to troll or do any of that stuff right. but I, I i could understand because i feel like a lot of people always do like they try to post up a positive thing or whatever, a facade of whatever it is they're doing. There's a lot of there's and a lot it's of like, standard tropes. Yeah, yeah that it's like you know I'm doing this and that or you know right. don't ever give up. Kind yeah, of. it's like a, just just there's a new shut the fuck up and do do just, your thing and just do, you know, go just yeah. just produce results. Do it do it in silence though. You know right. you don't need to put it up like every day. Sure. You know trying to exactly. be the next fucking like who are you trying to reaffirm yourself or somebody else or what? that's like, what I up? feel like it is though. You yeah. know it definitely pe- it's a reflection of themselves. You yeah, know? you're it, trying it almost, to make yourself feel better. I don't want to. I, I guess it, yeah. It almost seems like like a like a point of weakness. Maybe not weakness. I don't yeah. know if that's the right word. Maybe but vulnerability. Just a point of vulnerability. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which I don't know. I don't. I don't really get it. Who know. Maybe we're too old for that shit. I don't know. Maybe. But I think as you get older, you kind of get a little bit smarter to it, and kind of. I don't know if I'm getting like, smarter. Kind of like, I just feel like I'm getting older. <laughs> Getting older and see now, uh, yeah, yeah. I just feel like I just I, I just have less time for shit. To, I, just, I, I guess there's less to uh, less, less for time for, for thing, uh, things to worry about, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, especially with you. I mean, you have your family, your whole work, and everything. There's you can't even give any kind of energy to those kinds of things. Yeah, and that, yeah. That's that's one of those things, and and that one of my big, I don't know. I guess something to live by. I don't. Know. I don't. Know. I'm not trying to, to to preach by any means, but but it's like if you kind of just carry all these these rocks in your backpack. If you carry like like okay, somebody says something bad on social media. Something says something bad today. Somebody behind me, like or somebody at work gave me some shit. This and that. And like I said, easier said than done. But if you just kind of carry all this stuff in your backpack, then your day is gonna be a lot more difficult when you're carrying fifty pounds of rocks in on on your back. Yeah. You know. So I don't know. It's just. Just let it be because, just, like, just, I mean, you don't have any go. control over the, any of that external part. Yeah, so just, just let all that shit go and, and your life will be a lot easier for that day. And then there'll be a new backpack of bullshit that you're going to have to deal with the next day that you're going to have to figure out how to just throw off as well. It's just kind of, you know, just chill. I don't know. <laughs> no, I definitely, I hear you on that. I I'm a couple of IPAs in by this point, so... Is that what we're drinking? You guys are gonna, I don't know what this oh, is. Oh, pa- pale ale. See? Pa- you, don't, pale you don't even know yeah. what you're drinking right now. Yeah, I don't even know what's going on. Citrus yeah. Nessis? Yeah. What, what is that? Citrus and Nessis. Citrus, citrus Nessis. <laughs> citrus Nessis. Tris- Fuck it. I can't, I'm going I'm to stop on that. All right. Word to the uh, to the Lagunitas people. If you guys are going to make strong beer, make strong beer that we can pronounce. Yes. How about that? Because after two... I mean, before one, I wouldn't be able to pronounce this, but I'm really having to put some put some gas into this one, and I'm not I'm not too appreciative. Yeah, of this it. is a fucking tongue twister. If uh, there was a spelling bee, I'm yeah. not winning it. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, I would have lost a long time ago, but yeah, yeah. I definitely wouldn't win off of that one. Well, on that, uh, on that note, on uh, misspelling, right? I think I'm gonna call it. Let's wrap it up. But dude, I want to thank you so much for being <laughs> sorry, on the podcast. Sorry if we went we went on too long. Oh no, know. man. Where, where, where are we at? Uh, we're at about an hour and thirteen minutes right now. Jeez. Oh, All right. Well, good times. Yeah, and I know the Legion that is the Tomorrow Man Podcast Legion. Mm-hmm. They're listening. They're dedicated, right. and they heard this whole thing. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of old friends, a lot of old friends. So yeah. say hi. To, I want to say hi to everybody, and uh, yeah. you know, I'll see you guys. I'll probably see you guys at San Fernando Brewing at some point, and you know, we could hang. we could catch up then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in to Tomorrow Man Podcast. How can people find you? Um, how can people find me? Okay, so probably Instagram uh, yeah. audio underscore Andy, or um, uh, MXPX. We have a a crew. A crew kind of uh, Instagram as well, MXPX underscore crew. Um, I run that, and we just kind of, it's just most of our bullshit antics while we're on the road, and just kind of pictures of just like, I don't know, random stuff, and mostly tech stuff. So if anyone who, you know, anybody who likes seeing guitars and drums or whatever, yeah, feel free to come check them out. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thanks again, brother. I really yeah. appreciate Cheers you coming on. on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, here's next time. Bye bye.